Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. Welcome to Macro Markets, where we analyze how the macroeconomic news and events impact the crypto space. I'm your host, Marcel Pashman, veteran stock markets and derivatives trader analyst at Cointelegraph. On today's Macro Market Show, we'll be explaining the US Federal Reserve impact after reducing its balance sheet by $1 trillion. Plus, we'll discuss China's latest deflationary data and how could that mean trouble for Bitcoin. Today's show will start by discussing the impacts of the Federal Reserve balance sheet, financial times. Investors brace for turbulence as the Federal Reserve balance sheet shrinks by $1 trillion. Okay, so first things first. What is the Federal Reserve balance sheet? Well, it's the assets held by the central bank, including treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, foreign currencies, loans to banks, gold, etc. It is not incorrect to say that the Federal Reserve can print money out of thin air, since the US Treasury can issue bonds, which can be sold for dollars. And why the hell does the Federal Reserve need $9 trillion anyway? Well, my friend, to give it away for friends and allies, salvage some banks, cover the government overspending and a small part to hand out those $1,200 the stimulus checks. So basically, they inflated their assets by $5 trillion between December 2019 and April 2022. The US Central Bank bought trillions of dollars of government bonds and mortgage-backed securities to help stabilize the financial system during the early stages of the COVID pandemic. But last spring, started letting its holdings mature without replacing them. Let's look at a chart from the Federal Reserve balance sheet to make things more clear. So this orange line is the Federal Reserve total assets measured, measured in trillions of dollars on the left scale. And you can see that it started from $4.1 trillion back in February 2020, all the way to $9 trillion in April 2022. And it has since then decline to 8.2, 8.1 trillion dollars over the last year. So the decline was especially more evident here from March 2023 until now, August 2023. So it went from 8.7 trillion dollars to the current 8.2 trillion dollars. So the Federal Reserve balance sheet has been declined, but it's still very up from what it was before the pandemic levels in 2020, back in February and March, at $4.1 trillion. More importantly, notice the steep incline in the early 2020, which occurred during a 38% crash on the S&P 500 index. That's the blue area over here is the S&P 500 index. So it's a coincidence that the Federal Reserve inflated the assets just as the markets were crashing. Another way coincidence is the 4.8 thousand points on the S&P, the right scale. It's all-time high, just as the Federal Reserve balance sheet was re reaching its all-time high as well, so crossing 8.8, 8.9 trillion dollars. So investors tend to focus too much on the interest rates decision and underestimate the effects of adding or removing 1 trillion dollar of liquidity within a couple of months. Now, back to the Financial Times article. A special Federal Reserve facility designed specifically to suck up excess cash still has investors putting 1.8 trillion in, in it every night. Yeah, you heard it, right? Investors are so afraid of the markets and a recession that they are using ultra short like daily loans to the Federal Reserve. Plus, the interest rates are high enough to cover inflation. So why take additional risk? That has also caused the Federal Reserve balance sheet to remain inflated, meaning the banks are not willing to loan to business or to loan to other banks, even if they pay higher fees, or they're not willing to take six months, a year, two year government bonds, they rather stick to the daily loans, the Federal Reserve, even if it's the flat interest rate paid, at least they feel it's more secure. So the banks themselves, the hedge funds, and the big investment firms 
are not willing to take additional risk. That's why the Federal Reserve has an additional $1.8 trillion in overnight loans on their balance sheet as well. Investors are fearing a recession, are fearing that some of the other banks won't be able to pay their loans, to pay what they own. So one thing should be clear, liquidity is not an issue, not for financial institutions, not for the Federal Reserve. So what's the problem here? Too much cash? Well, the Treasury has a huge deficit as the government spends more than it gets from taxes or whatever means they use to get funding from. So the government has an overspending budget problem. Consequently, the Treasury needs to start rolling some of the debt, meaning issue debt with longer term expiry, instead of letting it expire like it just did. So the balance sheet reduced by $1 trillion, but that's unsustainable going forward. They won't be able to continue reducing the balance sheet any longer, which has been a huge contributor for the inflation reduction. So the less liquidity is on, out on the markets, the lower pressure is on inflation. And as soon as the central bank starts issuing new debt or rolling, rolling over debt that is expiring, it's going to add additional liquidity to the market and pressure the inflation up. So the more money in circulation, the prices of everything tends to go up. Ultimately, inflation will feel the biggest impact once the Federal Reserve is forced to expand its balance sheet again. Their best hope is convincing those depositors of the ultra-short loans to buy their 2-year, 5-year, 10-year, 20-year new debt issuing. But I'm not sure that will happen given how afraid the market is in terms of inflation and recession. So good luck from Jeremy Powell, because he's definitely going to need some. Now, for those investors holding scarce assets, such as Apple stocks, land, gold, Bitcoin, my advice is hang on tight. Don't be fooled by the momentary reduction of the inflation, because it's not sustainable. That will not last. That's my own personal opinion. It does not reflect Cointelegraph's official view nor is financial advice. Now, let's move to China, where the exact opposite issue is creating uncertainty. China slips into deflation in warning sign for world economy. China is suffering an unusual bolt falling prices for a range of goods, from commodities such as steel and coal to daily essentials and consumer products such as vegetables and home appliances. Chinese consumer prices fell 0.3% in July compared with the year earlier. Wow, just wow. They are actually having deflation and economists believe that's an issue. The article adds, for China, the absence of inflation reflects an imbalance in the economy characterized by ample supply and dormant domestic demand, the latter of which economists say Beijing must do more to rouse. So, they expect government incentives programs like adding more liquidity to save the economy. So, two things are important to monitor in China. A. Domestic consumption is decreasing, it's declining. B. The markets expect a miracle from the central bank expanding the balance sheet. And it's just not how things work in real life. Investment by private business fell to below their pre-pandemic levels. Okay, so another red flag here. Companies are unwilling to invest, so certainly there's no demand from domestic production or potential to increase exports. Chinese exports and economic bulk work during the COVID years are now falling at their fastest pace in years as demand in the Western world dries up. Yeah, a bunch of red flags coming from China no doubt. If they can't export because other regions are relying on protective measures to stimulate domestic or local production, China's only way out is handing out credit for domestic consumption, which doesn't help to bring US dollars in or to find new external markets to explore. That would be another way to get more dollars or to get more gold or whatever. They need to export, so they need to find new markets. Neither fiscal nor monetary policymakers have launched any larger scale stimulus measures 
in part because of constraints such as elevated debt levels. Notice the difference from the US. China cannot inflate their debt to $32 trillion dollars simply because that would cause a massive devaluation in their local currency. That's how it's supposed to be in every country, unless you can convince 60% of the market to hold your own government bonds and banknotes as reserves, which is the case of USA. The real estate sector, one of China's main drivers of growth for decades, is in a deep funk, which fresh worries, stoked this week by default concerns around one of China's biggest property developers. Oh, come on, man. You've got issues in local demand, exports, and now the real estate sector? Is China blowing up? The honest answer is yes, they screwed up. But things are not so bad as it sounds. Facing a recession might be a better solution than lowering interest rates or increasing debt and let the market devalue your currency so or to deplete your international reserves to sustain the price of the one that's not good for the long term maybe a short term two or three year recession is a better way out the big question is can the rest of the world function without china growing five to eight percent per year and what happens if china starts offloading their u.s treasuries I don't have the answer to those concerns, and likely no one does. It will certainly not be fun to hold stocks that happen to depend on global economic growth or simply use too much financial leverage, and probably not a good time to hold commodities. So expect a short to mid-term negative impact on Bitcoin if China's growth dissipates. Well, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe the new Quantelegraph Marketing Research YouTube channel. See you.